What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophie, most people know me as Stay Gold Online. And in this video, we're gonna shoot some Q&A and I've pulled these questions from Instagram polls. As important it is for the practical part of barbering, there's another aspect to that and that is the mental side of it as well. I wanted to answer a couple of your guys' questions that I've saved from a previous Q&A. And again, you guys, I appreciate all of you guys for always leaving comments and questions and everything like that because I think when you ask those things they kind of also help me as well as an educator to be triggered by certain questions to think about ah okay next time I do a video I should definitely talk about this because I remember somebody asking those questions so the more you guys kind of get engaged with my page I'm actually taking a lot of notes as well to make sure that I'm providing you guys also some value every time you tune in to whether it's gonna be on my Instagram, whether it's on, you know, here on YouTube, uh, Facebook, all the way down to TikTok, just to give you guys, you know, shorter versions of everything. So again, thank you guys for always getting involved with those Q and A's. So I'm just gonna go down the list. Um, and these are probably more of the common questions that I get the most. And oftentimes too, when I am doing Q and A's, another thing to remember is, don't ever feel like your question is not a good question because I can guarantee you if we were in a room full of people and there was a question that you had asked, whether people raise your hand or not, there's got to be at least five other people in that room, if not more, that have the same exact question as you. So don't ever feel doubtful about your questions, no matter what level, because somebody can relate always. When was the first time you ever cut somebody's hair and how did it turn out? I really don't care what level you are. If it's your first haircut ever, you best believe it's not going to be the best haircut that you can produce. Everything comes in stages, so everybody's day one is going to be the same exact way. If you've had no prior experience to how to cut hair, you're going to do a shitty haircut. It happens. I've done, let's see, my first haircut experience. Okay, let me tell you about the first... My first haircut I did wasn't a real one that I could base off of because it was just one of my friends who, who, who asked me to trim her ends and I only did just like the dusting off the ends. It wasn't anything crazy like a fade or anything. But let me tell you about the first time I actually faded somebody in a barbershop. It wasn't, it wasn't horrible. It just took me a really long time. And I can't say it was like the most perfectly blended haircut I've ever done. It was just the transitions were okay to where, you know, nothing really stood out. But for me to readjust the fade because I kept chasing those lines hard because I didn't know where to stop my fades. That was probably the most challenging thing I did when I did a haircut for the first time in a barbershop. But I also, you know, I learned the hard way as well. If you are going to attempt to go into a fade and you start with that skin line, it's going to be really hard to blend out. And I remember it feeling like I just had no control of how it was going to end up. I didn't know how long it was going to take. Usually if you know something really well, you can kind of plan out, okay, this part of the haircut as I'm doing it is probably going to be this amount of time. I'll probably finish within my time frame, you know, 30 to an hour, whichever, whichever business structure you currently work in, that's kind of how you can scale it in your head. But in the beginning, when I was cutting hair, like I was shooting for as fast as I could, but I was landing a lot closer to hour and a half, two hours, but not because I was fine tuning the haircut, but more so because I was still learning how to cut hair. To bring that to right now, if you are scared of cutting slow, do not kind of let that feeling go because it literally comes in phases. The faster you get is just because of the practice and the skill sets you've already built to get better at it. Don't think that there is like just some shortcut way to cut and that's gonna save you time. It's more so of you understanding the process of what you're going through as best as you can. Like you gotta know that like the back of your hand and that is what's gonna allow you to have the speed later on. Did you have to cut people in your life to get to the stage? Or in other words, be successful? Uh, to answer your question, yes. You gotta think about the people you spend the most time with. Usually they say it's like, you're just like the top five people that you spend the most time with. When you think about those things, um, it really does make sense. I remember my old set of friends, they were really good friends, not bad people at all, but they just weren't doing anything that I was inspired to work harder in. So once I started to change my environment and I saw people grinding way harder, doing way bigger things, it pushed me 
on its own. I was just like, man, if they can do this, it just made me feel weak if I didn't want to level up to the same amount. So it started pushing me to work harder. So I do definitely believe that if you position yourself around people that you want to do things like, or not even that you have to be in the same field, you know, because the group that I moved into are in a completely different field. They're still in the creative arts, but they're doing, you know, dance, they're doing design, they're doing music, they're doing, you know, all that other kind of stuff. And just to see people grow in those, in those areas pushed me to want to elevate in everything that I do. So whether that's hair, photography, videography, um, I've always just being in a pace, in a place where people are just constantly growing helped me also want to keep pushing for higher and better. If they aren't doing anything challenging, it grows on you because you're like, oh, you know, there's no sense of urgency in your group. So it, it has, it's a very important thing to have a group that, that you surround yourself that is constantly just doing stuff. You know, that momentum is super important. What's the biggest misconception about being a barber, especially a well-known barber on social media? Uh, this is a great question. Um, I think a lot of people have this, but the biggest misconception I don't know about misconception, but I mean, it's different today than it was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I felt like if I told somebody I was a barber, people just looked down on it like you worked at McDonald's. Like it just wasn't a very um, interesting topic that people would want. Like now if I say it, people are like, oh my God, that's cool. Like they want to know more, you know? Um, but back then I feel like it just wasn't, it didn't have the respect that it does now due to social media blowing it up so big. Um, and then I guess the other part of this question was the misconception of being a well-known barber on social media. I mean, there's two, there's two groups that I feel this kind of uh, gets to. Some people are supportive and want to have the same things, you know, and I even sense it in some people. So um, I don't know if you guys know this, but I also do virtual classes and I do like online mentorships to help people. And in some of those sessions, I feel a resistance when people want to build their social media and they want help in that field, but they're almost slightly afraid of the story of what they currently feel about it, which is like, you know, it's bad to want followers, it's bad to want exposure or something like that on social media. And the point of social media is for you to grow, is for you to share your craft, right, and inspire people and be relatable to your audience and build that organic following that most people want. It's a constant build of you learning everything you've done because now when you put it out there, everybody can see it without you even have to, having to say anything. It's almost like the work itself represents you before you even have to write a caption about it. People will be able to see the passion through the feed, through the visuals, through what you create. And then as a reward, people share your images, people save your content. And so to be well known on social media is a side effect to your hard work. From the beginning, it was never like, okay, well, I'm gonna do a certain amount of these so I can gain a thousand followers. It was never like that. I've had a super organic growth from 2012 until now. And it's purely based on things that I like to do and enjoy and that I wanna share with people. And through that process, I was able to gain a super organic audience. And also, you gotta keep in mind too, like when I think about people that have huge followings, that, that isn't easy. I don't know if you guys noticed, but to reach a million followers, to reach, you know, anything above 500, that is a really difficult thing to maintain. The crazy thing is, you know, these misconceptions that people believe about social media influencers, and just well-known people in different industries is that it's easy or something to get to that point. There is a reason people have these high numbers because they're able to maintain a certain type of consistency within their pages. If you are inconsistent, it is very hard to grow on any platform. I'm going through this right now with YouTube, with TikTok, with Instagram still. You have to be able to keep consistency and that is hard work and on top of that, you still gotta work, right? Most barbers are currently working. They have to build teams eventually. You gotta pay out certain people to provide you with content if you, are, if you are not filming it yourself. There is so many backsides for why people's pages grow. It's not just because, oh, well, if you cut good, you deserve all this. Sure, that is one avenue of the business, but can you explain it? Can you build content? Can you build 
interesting content that people come that people want to come to your page and spend time and watch those things. There's so much more than just doing a good haircut. And I go through this with people all the time that I finally just stopped entertaining those people completely because it's purely a waste of time because you're trying to argue with people who almost have it out to just completely misunderstand you no matter what you say. You let them go and that is the hardest thing is because when you are on social media and you start growing, you become, you're put the pressure of being under a microscope for everything you do because everyone's just waiting for you to make a mistake, for something to not look right so that they can highlight it. It's a very hard position to be in. I have never struggled with it up until this last maybe like year and a half with different things. And it's more of a personal battle because I don't like to just expose my shit online. But there is a pro and con to everything that you do, but how well you are able to walk through the fire I think is what makes people able to win at that level and then move on to the next level. Every single level has its own challenges. And one more thing is that if it gets harder, that just means this is your opportunity to level the fuck up. So I really do welcome any obstacles at this point because I know there's growth, there's lessons in growth hidden in those things. What is the number one advice you would give to a newer female barber? Great question. Um, honestly, work really hard. Don't worry about followers, don't worry about likes, don't worry about anything. Just worry about getting your skills to the best level possible. And that could take a year, that could take five years. It just depends on how much you're willing to put into it. But also, when you're going into practice and you're cutting hair, it's not just you just getting through the hours, it's your intention behind those moments. So when I go in every morning, I was like, okay, I know I'm gonna see Joe. I saw Joe last week, two weeks ago, whatever. And I remember the cut that I did on him. He's probably gonna want the same cut. If it is, let me make this cut better than the last time. And I already took a picture, so now I can compare and make sure that this next session is better. So each of those people, new people coming in, okay, this person has a completely different head shape. How can I make this good? And how I'm gonna take a picture and how I'm gonna gain this client so that he can come back in a week or two and I can compare and keep growing my skill sets. You see what I mean? I'm not just going in there and just cutting hair. It's just like you gotta find ways and pinpoint exactly what you want to get better in because then your brain, the way you practice and the way you work is going to be a lot more effective than you just going in there and just, okay, what am I going to get today? It's like, what do you want to get done today that was better than yesterday? And you just keep building those skill sets. At the same time, as you're learning those things, document everything that you're going through. Start building an organic audience. Whatever it is you've gone through so far, there is a relatability in those stories if you were able to just share it. Build your platform. It makes it, makes it a lot more interesting. You just don't know what kind of brand ambassadorships you're gonna get into. Like, I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't build my page the way I did. And it wasn't anything crazy. I was just documenting. I was just telling people my story about things that I was going through then and now and it attaches to people and people like the story that they want to collaborate on different things and you just really don't know where that's going to take you so if you just stay true to yourself build your journey document like hey if i'm still if i'm if i'm learning something i will write in there hey i'm still learning how to do this and people appreciate that to where i'm even having my clients recognize that as well to where they're saying you know what i love coming to you because you're all, you're still educating yourself even at this even where you're at right now, you're still going through stuff. You're still being, you're still investing into education and learning something, and 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 that's valuable for them because they're just like, okay, well, if I want something new, I know Sophie's going to be able to do that because she's always constantly researching and developing different things so that that could be added on to what kind of cut that they currently have or maybe want next. Just a tip for that. What is it that I would say sets you apart from barbers like JC the Barber, Rob the Original, dot dot dot? Both of them are individually amazing in different ways. The thing is, you can see these people as inspirations and something you kind of want to similarly be like, but at the same time, you gotta put a twist on your own and create your own vibe, right? Rob the Original is an amazing barber. 
he does a lot of hair art and that's his thing. Nobody can touch it because that's just something he practices every day. JC the Barber works on celebrities, musicians, and I don't even know. I'm not actually super, I'm not even fully updated to where, what he's up to now. But he's actually one of the reasons why I started learning how to charge more and value myself. And I heard this at a seminar years ago. He probably has no idea that I even took two sentences from his presentation and it changed the course of my barbering career in that moment. But when I see Rob, Rob is a great example. He's just constantly recreating himself in different ways, doing what he's always done, but in different ways and is constantly being able to grow that. I look at it as, okay, I need to redo what I'm doing now and somehow change it and make it more interesting and keep growing and keep staying relevant. He helps me with that. So you find these people that are constantly elevating and growing and you think about what they're doing and how can you apply yourself the same way and do that as well. Yeah.